This is the Game Block Cast, Episode 2. I'm your host, Richard Sherman, and this week I have with me... Kirill. Jonathan. And Christian. And so let's just get right into it. Kirill, what have you been playing this week? Uh, well, I've been playing Civ Five with you, Richie. Yes, you have. <laughs> How cute. As, as we had been last week, but this time we actually got to finish our game. Yeah, we actually went somewhere. Yeah, we, we completed something for once in our lives. That's true. Uh, so, Kirill and I played on Prince difficulty, which is the default difficulty. But the for default some reason, normal. It's always been intimidating to us for some reason, at least to me. I have no idea why. But we actually decided to choose random leaders. I think we talked about this last week. Yeah, but. yeah, we did. But we we ended up as myself being the Austrians, um, so as M- Maria Teresa and, and Richie being the Egyptians. Yes, Kirill was a warmongering Austrian menace, which I don't think Austria is very well known for, except, I mean, Austria was the birthplace of Hitler, so there's that relationship. Also the place where World War One kind of started, you know? Yeah. Austria? That's true. Yeah, yeah. Austria. Austria hung. Hung- that's it's close enough. It's half of it. It's not even close. <laughs> not even close. It's pretty close. Okay. It's been split up into like six different countries now. <laughs> it's not even close. It's just two, Kiro. It's Austria and Hungary, okay? Hungary? <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. All right, Let's get all right. Back right. Never, mind. Never mind Jonathan's ignorance. <laughs> yeah, so uh, anyway, so Kiro and I spawned on two different continents. Um,. I w- and I ended up being on a continent with Russia and the Songhai, uh, which is a weird country I haven't actually heard about before. But yeah. Okay, so we had two Hun empires to deal with, to compete with, and one of them just happened to be on my continent. And so I, uh, I very quickly took him out because he decided to amass his forces very o- early on in the game to attack me. And so I decided to go on a warmongering offensive and just took him out. It pretty much did not end the entire game. Like, he might have been at war for a solid 350 turns. Jeez, how many years is that? Uh, Well, the game ended in, what, 2005? Okay, that was (laughs) annoying. (laughs) Yeah, no, okay. I'm so, it it does it just disconnects randomly. I'm sorry. Okay, okay. I'm just gonna say my same comment I said while that was happening. The game ended in like 2005, didn't it, Kirill? Yeah, it was somewhere somewhere around there. I mean, it did take us like 420 turns to to finish. Yeah, I mean, but Kirill was fighting the whole time. He wasn't like a hot spot for people that didn't like him. I guess uh, there's like three or four different countries that. At some point, he went to war with, I guess. Or was it... Yeah, it was three. It was Yeah, three. three. Three whole ones. The Arabians, the Mongols, and the Huns. So they're... Technically, two of them are the same people, but different time periods. Mm-hmm. And um, so, I mean, Kirill stayed on top of the scoreboard most of the time. Anyway, uh, I did... Like, I didn't do very well that game. I mean, I just caught up with the fact that Russia was just really close to me, so I just started attacking him, and I didn't really try to expand my civili- civilization that much. Uh, so that was kind of my downfall. It took me a while to catch up, and I don't, I didn't really catch up to Kirill at all. Like I, I started getting fi- ever. Okay, yeah, I started speeding up, catching up. Okay, hold on, I'm gonna say that again. I started catching up more towards the end of the game, but we finished it a lot a little bit quicker than we thought we did yeah especially like the end of the game came about pretty quickly after we uh we launched the first nuke Mm -hmm. but but that first nuke uh, didn't go exactly where kirill expected no i was uh i accidentally so okay so originally (laughs) originally i was going to attack a city then richie wasn't ready with his forces so i decided to wait a turn so as I click back at my city where my nuke is, I accidentally clicked on the tile right next to it. And all of a sudden... <laughs> Just the slow motion, like, silence of a nuke falling right next to one of Kirill's cities completely on accident. Just was the best part of the game. <laughs> we were both attacking uh, Harun al-Rashid, which is uh, Saudi Arabia, right? Yeah, he's Arabian. Yeah, so, like... He had so many different cities that, like, we had to nuke him at some point because we I, just couldn't. 
I think his his max city count was like twenty two at one Jesus point. Christ, it was just so much, and he he would do different things like purposefully settle on our continents just to make us upset. And so we tried to nuke him. The first nuke ever in our game, which is a pretty important part of Civ, like it's kind of a military accomplishment when you drop that first nuke, was done like was launched by Kirill and only affected Kirill, really. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was a, it was like an outer goal, mm-hmm. outer goal. So, I mean, but after that, there wasn't really much uh, going on. So like, me and Kirill both struck Harun al-Rashid at the same time and quickly took out all of his cities. I think it might have t- taken us like maybe at the most like 40 turns just mm-hmm. to take out about 20 cities of his because they were all super weak even mm-hmm. though he, they were just super abundant. Yeah, like so all we had left at that point was Genghis Khan. All the other civilizations were gone. Jeez. So, okay, anyway. Um... So, but there were two cities left of Harun al Rashid's up in the islands, which Kirill was going to go get. And then I just started attacking Genghis Khan, thinking, oh, wait, you know, like I'll just start taking him out while Kirill moves his units up here. Apparently, that wasn't the plan. Because Kirill not got the plan. <laughs> super mad at me. It was like, what are you doing? Because uh, like, I, I, had, I had a couple cities like s- scattered in between the, the Mongolians because I had won them from conquest be- in wars before with them and so I wanted to move all my troops through and defend those cities because they were all to the south and there was only one, one part of the continent where I could actually move through and that was all the Mongolian territory until Richie decided to attack yeah well I thought it was a great time because I mean I had all my units I just moved them all up there. I was like, hey, you know, I could just end this a little faster. And Kiro was kind of upset at me for the rest of the game. But the game I, didn't really last much longer. No, it was it was only a couple turns. I, I nuked I nuked uh, his, his main sh- city. Uh, I, f- I forget what its name is. It started is. with then, a K. It was not normal. Karakorum. Kara- yeah, Karakorum. And then we thought, like, okay, now we only have a couple more cities to get. But... We were playing domination mode without complete kills, I guess. So once you take away all the capitals, it's done. Just boom, they're no longer a part of the game. But after nine hours of playing, we are ready for the king difficulty. Yeah, so king difficulty is pretty much the AI characters get a little bit of extra benefits, which I think is awful. I just feel like pretty they OP. should just create the AI, like have a smarter AI rather than an AI that has ridiculous bonus effects. I I would agree with you. Mm-hmm. All right. So, uh, have you played anything else, Carol? Are you good? No, no, I'm I'm good. I <laughs> this has been a slow week for me. Yeah, February is kind of a slow month, just in gaming in general. Uh, anyway, I've been playing uh, the Last of Us DLC Left Behind which I forgot was actually on the disc because The Last of Us Remastered comes with the DLC. So I decided to try it out, and it's more of the story, but we won't get into much of the story, but uh, it's really good. It's about two hours long, you know, so it's something you could probably do in one sitting. But So it takes place before all of the events of Last of Us and, like, why the main one of the main protagonists, Ellie, is... It's a really good indicator of, like, what she was before the events of The Last of Us and then three-quarters of the way through The Last of Us. Like, you can see the character growth. And playing as her is a lot different than playing uh, as Joel, the other main character that you play for for most of the game. Like, you get to play her a little bit towards the end, but not a whole lot. Um, And she is not the same. So, like... Joel, you're able just to run up to people and start punching him and stuff, and pretty, take him out with relative ease. But with her, it she has she has a knife, so she can do some damage, but she can't really do a whole lot in hand to hand combat. So it's really you have to be a lot more strategic. So you know it's not it's kind of a different game. It's it's much more stealthy. Uh, I guess, because pretty much everything has to be calculated or else it's going to go 
horribly wrong and you'll die super fast. But I just kind of wanted to touch on that a little bit just because, it, you know, it, I thought it was a really good and worthwhile DLC. If you get the chance to play it, you definitely should. Uh, it adds a lot of character development and good character building for Ellie. Uh, I think I appreciate her more as a character after this, even though she was a pretty fantastic character to begin with. I just think it's really worth two hours of your time. Anyway, but what I've mainly been playing is Final Fantasy X remastered on the PS4, and that game is pretty crazy. So How many I, remasters do you have? Well, okay, so like the whole point of, like one of the reasons why I got a PS4 is that I wanted to try all the games I missed out on on the PS3 or, you know, haven't really played a lot of with the PS2 either. So I, like most of the games I actually have for my PS4 right now are remastered. I have the Left 4 Dead remaster, Left 4 Dead, oh my gosh. The <laughs> Last of Us, my goodness. Uh, the Zombies Last of Us. Zombies the same way. <laughs> <laughs> they both have L in the word and the title. Uh, anyway, but I have The Last of Us remastered, Uncharted remastered, well, the Nathan Drake collection, which is a trilogy of the remastered games and final fantasy 10 slash 10 2 remastered so there you go it's mostly remasters i do have destiny i haven't really played that but anyway so i've been playing final fantasy 10 and i've played a little bit on it on ps2 but not a whole lot so this game like at, at surf at surface value i felt was a lot similar like really similar to Final Fantasy 1 through 3 uh, just because you know they took away the active battle gauge or whatever it's called I can't remember we were talking about this last week but uh, actually have a speed stat in it so like whoever's faster gets to attack more often so that like that's an interesting component that I haven't that I haven't actually played a Final Fantasy game like that before I mean so you can actually attack multiple times before an enemy can, which I thought was really neat. Uh, it's So far, it's a pretty neat combat system. Uh, it's not really a whole lot different than previous Final Fantasy games, but I think the HD re remaster lends itself well to Final Fantasy, and this game particularly, the art style, it still looks really good. Uh, some of the character animations aged a little bit because, you know especially coming off of a game like The Last of Us where everything is motion captured and all the characters have really good movement and are feel a little bit hold on the characters have more movement and you know animations on their faces and stuff like especially the facial expressions in this game are nowhere near you know modern games that are motion captured like they're all horrible in comparison and the voice acting is a little eh there's not a whole like the animations themselves don't hold up as well as the rest of the game does is what i'm trying to say but and the story is pretty interesting too um you play as a main the main character is like an all-star athlete in this game called blitzball where it's a weird mix between soccer and water polo which is super that weird sounds incredibly gay <laughs> well, <laughs> like that is the most. It's like soccer, but they're all shirtless and all covered in water. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, they all wear clothes, but I don't know. Like, they, like it's really weird because they're it's like a giant, like sphere of water that they play in. Kind of like if you've ever played Mario Galaxy, there were a couple of planets that were just a giant sphere of water that you could swim around in. It's basically that, but there's goals inside of it. Like watching the cutscene, like I haven't got. Apparently, there's a mini game of it that I haven't played yet. But watching the cutscene where people are actually playing it, I just had no idea. Like some of the athletes would just fall out of the sphere into the audience, and I was like, "That's interesting." But anyway, um, I haven't played a whole lot of it. I probably played like four or five hours. But I think it's a pretty neat game. I so far like Final Fantasy games. While I like them, sometimes they don't grab my attention right off the bat, and. I think this one does. I think I'm going to keep my interest in it for, you know, as long as the game is, which is apparently a really long time. So there you go. So Jonathan, what have you been playing? 
I've been playing Resident Evil 4, uh, the remastered HD Super Turbo Edition for PC, <laughs> and uh, it's it holds up really well for especially for a game that came out in like 2007, eight, something like that. When did the uh, GameCube go out of production? 2006, but Six. I mean it was on the GameCube. It was on the GameCube, so it was probably like 2005. So it's a uh, what a fifteen no ten year old yeah. game that's bad yeah. and uh, <laughs> it holds up really well. Um, obviously it's an HD remaster, so it's going to look a little bit a bit better. Um, but Jesus, the voice acting is just so Capcom. <laughs> it's not great, um, and it's weird. I don't know if it's just my computer, but I remember like back on the GameCube, like the audio is like. A second off in cutscenes, like oh. you'll see Leon gasp, but and then like a second later you'll hear <gasps> like it's some like bad <laughs> Chinese kung fu movie or something. Oh, good. And uh, but no, it's really good, and it's a you know, it's that good old horror survivor survival game that kind of like broke out of um like the Resident Evil like original formula. The mold. And it, yeah, the older like. Resident Evil 0, 1, 2, 3, Nemesis, all that kind of stuff. Um, mm-hmm. It got people kind of used to 5 and 6, which people didn't like. I didn't like. They weren't really great games. Um, but yeah, you still, you get the better camera angles of 5 and 6 with like the old, you know, I don't have enough ammo ever, <laughs> and I need to kill the zombie feeling of um, 1, 2, 3, and 0. Um, also the best part of that game is picking up a bunch of items and I'd be like, oh crap, my briefcase is all that <laughs> stuff. Now I have to sit here for 20 minutes and reorganize my briefcase and then I'll walk forward 20 feet and then get my head chopped off by a guy with the chainsaw. <laughs> and then it doesn't save. And, and then, then it doesn't do it save. Again. <laughs> and then I do it over again. But no, it's it's great. It's got terrible controls, which I think is, is yes. on pur- on purpose. There you go. Mm-hmm. It's got terrible controls on purpose because tank controls. exactly. Leon moves like a tank, and it's yeah. really annoying. But I think they did that on purpose because at times it'll be like, "Oh crap, there's a guy behind me. I need to go. Don't have enough time to turn around, so I'm just gonna run." And it, it definitely adds to that feeling of well. I'm screwed and I'm gonna die like a good yeah a horror survival game should have um but yeah it's fun gotten to the point where it, like you shoot a zombie's head off and it doesn't die just like this little <laughs> weird scythe so thing pops paras- out of its head or like the parasite stuff just yeah just everywhere exactly. disgusting <laughs> yeah That's... I remember oh sorry no go oh, ahead okay I just remember watching you know James play it um, that he it felt like Leon moved a lot faster. Yeah, gosh. and you know maybe controls have gone you know like improved over the last ten years. But I I've been I played a little bit of the remastered version a couple months ago, and I just maybe it's not maybe it's because I'm not playing it on a controller, but it just did not feel as good as it it's- looked way better on a controller it sucks on keyboard and mouse <laughs> because you move like a tank so it's really awkward and you don't exactly like aim with your mouse as well as you thought you would mm-hmm. so I w- if you're definitely if you're going to pick up the HD remaster of Resident Evil 4 on PC get try to get like an Xbox controller or like one of those cheap 20 $25 like Logitech controllers because mm-hmm. it's it'll improve your experience tenfold and for yeah, those of you oh, go ahead. wondering when Resident Evil 4 came out, it was January 11th, 2005. So dang, holds up so so good. So that game is 11 years old at this point. That makes me feel really old. Yeah, well, I'm not even that old. Mhm. I mean, you're as old as Ocarina of Time, right? That's how old you are. 1998. Yeah. Yep. There you go. Wow. <laughs> dang, there you I'm go. old. Someone mm-hmm. give me my social security right now. <laughs> You're not that old yet. Yes, I am. Kill me now. <laughs> then you wouldn't get your social security. I don't care. I don't need social security when I'm dead. 
<laughs> okay. All right. That's all I've been playing this week, guys. No, 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 no. Goodbye. So news time. Uh, so for those of you interested in Super Smash Brothers, Corin and Bayonetta have just been released. Uh, if you don't know who Corin is, he is the main protagonist of Fire Emblem Fates, and which is the new one that's about to come out that we talked about last week. And Bayonetta is from Bayonetta. So there you go. Uh, I I've I bought them, but I don't really have a whole. I haven't really played them a whole lot. Uh, Corin kind of plays like a weird in between Fire Emblem character, where um, he feel like some of his moves feel like Robin, but his sword moves feel like Marth or Lucina. So I think he's a good balance. I don't know why they needed to have a sixth Fire Emblem character. Because they're easy to make moves for. Kind of, uh, well, also Sakurai has said in the past that he really likes Fire Emblem at the moment. So I guess that makes sense. And plus Fire Emblem Awakening was extremely prop, pop, popular. Popular. Uh, so Bayonetta, she seems like a combo queen. Like <laughs> you can do some crazy combos. Her final smash is looks insane. That uh, that down smash where you can hit people that are hanging off the edge, that's gonna be yeah. that's that's gonna be a patch soon. I can feel it. A patch some way. Soon. That's I, that's pretty powerful. Yeah. Well, that like well, some people can do that. I mean, Pikachu used to be able to head pe- butt people in melee, like off the edge. Yeah, but they couldn't they couldn't patch melee, so it's kind of just sure they could have they could have just released new discs. <laughs> right. Yep, that's all they needed to do. And I'm sad because our my copy of Melee is thrashed, and I need to get a new one. Anyway, more news. Mother Three has a chance of being localized and released in the U.S. and Europe. Um, not the unofficial one done by Tomato. I think is the guy who localized it. That's the guy's nickname so. or something. I think so. I started to play Mother 3 through the localization patch, whatever it is, mm-hmm. and uh, it the beginning's really good. It's really sad, and I may have almost cried a little bit, but, <laughs> you know, it's a good game. I check it out. It's a lot of inspiration towards a lot of mm-hmm. things ever. Yeah, so it's just a rumor right now. Um, it looks rather interesting. Like, I haven't actually watched any, uh, any Mother 3 playthrough, really, so I'd go in it dark, into it dark. Uh, it's similar to Earthbound, I believe, right? Yeah. Uh, I mean, they've added a couple mechanics, but for, like the base game is practically practically the same. Okay. Well, and plus, in Brawl, Lucas was one of my favorite characters, so I guess I should give it a shot. Yeah. So that would be really cool if they localize it. It's just a rumor at the moment, so we don't really know if it's going to be true or not. But I hope so, because I would like to try it out on an official like Nintendo platform. Yeah. So this past week, I watched a Star Wars theory video about how Rey got to be on Jakku and who mm-hmm. Rey's this parents are. Now, this theory comes uh, to you by the Stupendous Wave channel on YouTube. And uh, it starts off on what he considers one of the most important se- sequence of events in the movie, which it mm-hmm. happens to be Rey's Force Vision. So obviously, there's going to be spoilers in here. If you haven't seen the movie, okay. I highly suggest it. The, the movie that's, warning. Gro- that's almost grossed $2 billion. Well, yeah, no, spoiler warning. Know. Just let it sink in there a little bit. There will be spoilers. Han Solo dies. Okay, there you go. Wow. Han Solo was killed was... by his son, Kylo Ren. There you go. That's how you ruin the whole movie in a sense. Yep, boom. There you go. Okay, so the majority of spoilers is done. Continue. Anyway, the the most significant thing he said is when when Rey is in the Force uh, vision and Rey is lying on the dirt and is suddenly approached by what seems to be a Knight of Ren, who attempts to swing the, uh, his lightsaber at Ren, but is stopped when an unstable bled, blade of a red lightsaber is thrust through his torso, possibly being Kylo Ren. So then the question comes up, why would Kylo Ren kill one of his associates to save Ren, or to save Rey? And that is because... He saves Rey because he knows her, because they are cousins, and what she is seeing, it happens to be a memory. So now, let's go back before Kylo Ren become, goes to the dark side. 
we know that Luke uh, developed a new Jedi Order to train Jedi, uh, so, but he also, according to this theory, took on a wife who had a child who happened to be Rey. Now, well, now while Ben, who happens to turn into Kylo later, but while Ben was training with Luke, according to this theory, he becomes frightened by the new experiences, and even begins to hate some of the other students as times go by, as time goes by. But not Ray, who at this time is probably just beginning to start her training herself, or Ray may have just been born at the time of Kylo's training, which would explain why Han nor Leia recognized her. But Ben knew her, and he could relate to her, seeing as they both came from, or they were both children of powerful and influential people in the galaxy. Now, jumping forward, after Kylo and the rest of the Knights of Ren kill all of Luke's students, with the exception of Rey, who Kylo saves as he could not see his own cousin being butchered, and having good still in him, he brings he takes Rey and lets Luke believe that she had been killed along with all of his other students, which prompted Luke to go into his exile after his great loss. He would th he, uh, Kylo then dropped Rey off on the planet Jakku, where he knew that she could pose no threat to him, and, wouldn't ha and he wouldn't have to kill her, but instead takes her out of the game completely. And that happens to be the same planet that Han Solo doesn't even look at, doesn't look for his Millennium Falcon at. So we know that it's kind of desolate and not a lot of people will go there. Uh, it also says that uh, she would have to live out her days as a scavenger and she would never be able to find out about her past. Also in Rey's Force Vision, these events happen right after each other. So the sword goes through the other knight, he approaches Rey, and then we see Rey as a young child on Jakku watching a ship fly off in the distance. Now, this could explain why... Ren Kylo was uh, so enraged when he finds out that a girl on Jakku helped BB-8 escape, because he's like, oh my goodness, there's this girl. <laughs> there or can't what? be any other girl on Jakku, it's no. just this one. Well, according to this theory, that's, that's what's going on. <laughs> so in this yeah, theory, Kylo good. also wipes Rey's memory, which is something that was also done to Revan in the Old Republic, and that is why... Uh, she is not able, she doesn't, she, all these memories are suppressed, and she's not actually able to remember them until she comes in contact with the old lightsaber. Now, later in the movie, Kylo abandons the BB-8 unit and takes Rey instead. He even takes off his mask mm -hmm. when confronted, when uh, Rey, like, talks about it, which doesn't really seem to be something that Kylo does unless he knows somebody. Like, he took it off for Han Solo, like, when he talked to his dad, Han Solo. But in any other case, he usually had his mask on. He becomes increasingly concerned when Rey escapes, uh, commenting that she is strong with the Force and that uh, she is just beginning to use her powers and become more powerful as time moves on, which seems like comments coming from somebody who knows more than he's letting on. He, would even, he even went as far as to not mentioning her to Snoke, as he truly wants no harm to come to her. And... He, instead of immediately trying to kill Rey in the final battle sequence, he even tries to train her, and obviously she doesn't do that, but that's what he tries to do at first. Now this theory, this theory explains Rey's heritage, knowledge, and power in the Force, as well as explaining why Luke didn't take her into exile with him or give her to Han and Leia. But this poses a problem that in Episode Eight, this may cause Luke to keep uh, Ray out of the conflict as he has already lost her once, and that could possibly set Ray up for failure when she confronts a more powerful and experienced Kylo Ren. And since these movies have focused on the Skywalker's impact on the galaxy, whether good or bad, if this theory is true, this would mean that the new tri trilogy highlights the best parts of the Skywalkers with Ray and the worst parts with Kylo Ren, having them come from the same place yet take very different paths. So what do you guys what do you guys think about that? I think it's kind of weird. Star Wars. <laughs> well, just just to go back to that point where he's where Kylo Ren says, "Oh, well, she's just learning like she's really powerful with the Force and she's just learning how to use them." I mean, that was just after she like reverse interrogated him, right? Yeah. Like I feel I feel like that bullet point or that piece of information is kind of right. it could still be valid, but I'm just saying like if she was able to like reverse mind interrogate that Kylo Ren, I think that would have been a good enough indicator, in my honest opinion, that he's strong in the force. Like, he doesn't have to know 
any previous knowledge about her. But yeah, I mean, like it sound like it makes sense. Uh, well, that's I mean, true. Like Luke, Ray being Luke's daughter is kind of like the obvious answer. So I don't necessarily know if that's what they'll do. But then again, mm-hmm. they may just do the obvious. I've watched thing. actually a lot of theory videos, and so like the the three or four big theories is the one that I just mentioned. The other one is that uh, she is the granddaughter of Obi Wan Kenobi. Mm-hmm. I've heard that one. And too. then the other one, the other one is Han Solo and Leia's daughter, which kind of doesn't really make sense. No. And then the other one is that she is basically Anakin yes. reincarnated by the Force or whatnot. Mm-hmm. She's just another amalgamation of the Force or something like that. But yeah, yeah, I mean. We won't, we probably, we'll never, we won't know until the eighth and, episode. And, yeah. Like, there's no way that's going to be ever talked about. And I just, I think it would make sense that she's Luke's daughter. It would make sense if she was somehow related to the Skywalker family. I think it would be really cool if, like, it wasn't a, like, if it wasn't a known Skywalker. Like, what if she was related to, you know, like, Anna, like the Skywalker family, but, you know, from, like, a distant relative or something like that? That would be interesting. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I just, I feel like they should just do something that's not so obvious. Like, don't, if she was, like, a random Force person, I think that would be pretty cool. Like, she was just a random Force-sensitive person. But... Well, I mean, both trilogies focus the skywalker family yeah i know and that's true but they are focusing on the skywalker family just based off the fact that they're covering kylo ren which is a skywalker and while he's not like the main main character like ray is it's still technically an important portion of you know skywalker history Mm -hmm. but i don't know Maybe there's a weird twist and she ends up marrying Kylo Ren. So then she'll technically what? be a Skywalker. <laughs> I, actually, I actually just read probably like 30 minutes ago uh, another, <laughs> another theory about the death of Han Solo. And so, He's not dead. No, well, uh, Nobody, I don't know. Nobody, no proof. <laughs> but what it was saying was that Han Solo was actually the one to trigger the lightsaber to go off and killed himself. So uh, like what, bull it, crap. what it what, bull no, what crap. it was what it what it what it what it was saying and it, it almost sort of makes sense. But so what it was saying was and that scene when they're talking really close let's see, actually I'll bring it up real quick. We can I cut, don't know. We can cut this well, I don't know. The shock in his face. Like doesn't, doesn't Kylo Ren also like say something like about that? He's like He pretty much Can you help me do something? And then kills him and he's like, Thank you for helping me like yeah, uh, I don't know. I mean, I it's know. not That's... like I don't feel like Han Solo was like, ah, he's gonna kill me. I should help him out with that. Yeah, like I don't, I don't think so. And the... that's not in his character. Well, really. and it would, it would be different if Han Solo's facial expression was different. Like when he got stabbed, it was just, it was kind of a shock. Yeah, like, his shock. Face, his betrayal. expression was express. It was an expression of shock and betrayal. Like I don't think it would be like shock and betrayal but i still helped you out on doing this like what i was saying was like when when uh kylo like puts down his like weapon and he kind of like grabs it and he turns it on himself so he can report to snoke that his father is dead yet he's not actually he wasn't actually the one that killed him so there could still be light left in him that hasn't been like eradicated or whatnot yeah, I don't know. but the whole I mean, the, the whole point of him killing his dad was to eradicate all the light. Right, but and but in, Kylo asked him to help him out. He's like, "Can you help me?" And he was like, "Yes." And then he turns it on himself. I, I don't know. It was just something. Yeah, I read. he he it asked was... him to help him in order to complete his tra- his total transformation to the dark side. Cause right, because he knew and he Kylo... still had light in him. So yeah, now... and Kylo. Now he's completely dark side because he killed his own dad. I I still think he's gonna convert at some point. Yeah, probably. I don't. Really? You don't? You think he's he's? I think I think always... I think he's a Darth Vader of the series. But Darth Vader converted at the end. Shut up. He did. 
Like even if it's in the last like ten minutes of the la- of the ninth episode, I think it's still gonna happen. Like if if he does die or you know whatever happens that may like okay not if he does die hold on when but, he dies well okay no if he is if he's dark like if he's dark you know if he's on the dark side then i'll i'll be really surprised like if he stays on the dark side the whole time cuz he's so conflicted and i know like that's one of the conflicts of the movie is him being conflicted um pun intended uh <laughs> like he god i lost my train of thought but i would just be very surprised one thing that i think would be kind of cool was if like in the uh, ninth movie kylo and ray fight together to defeat supreme leader snoke why the ninth movie why not the eighth well because there's going to be a ninth why not the 20th well, when they go on the super star killer base because well actually technically technically it'd be what the 11th no 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 there's two in between so three so it'd be the well, it'd be the 10th movie know, right. yeah they're doing those like in between yeah. movies that explain more stuff. okay but yeah. in the mainline star wars you know what i'm talking about Ep- episode nine episode nine i don't know i think i think kylo ren's gonna change and I think Ray, as lo- as far as re- like a relationship, like relation to the Skywalker family goes, I hope it's not Luke Skywalker, and I hope there's something more interesting than that. But it could also be Luke Skywalker, and I won't care that much once I know what happens. It, it, yeah, it could very easily be Luke Skywalker too. Or there's a triplet. There was a third child. <laughs> so th- from Luke. They, they go from <laughs> between one to twins to triplets. Yes. <laughs> Yes. Isn't, well, it is. Wait, it, but she's not like a million years old, though. Well, I'm not. Like I'm not Luke saying Skywalker. that. I'm just saying that, you know, Padme had that third child, and that third child had another child. Well, oh and, no, I was talking. I was saying because Anakin came out of like immaculate conception. You know, he. Yeah. yeah, he was. He's the Jesus figure. Yeah, and then and then Padme that had twins, children. and so now whoever Luke's wife was, who may or may not have a gravestone next to him on that island. Oh yeah, okay, it yeah, had continue. triplets. They could have. I don't know. But wh- why would Luke Skywalker go into exile and then bury his wife there? Like, I mean, so like, that I don't he know. could be with her. Well, no, 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 no. Well, that's I mean, not there's. What I mean. <laughs> Do you think that there's an actual Jedi temple there? And it, like, he he should well, he wouldn't have just stayed there for I, I don't know how, however long he was in exile. I'm just saying, for like, like why 20 would years? he? Why would he be in exile on the same? in the same planet as his Jedi temple. Like, what if he just went to a random planet? Like, Yoda didn't decide to go into exile, like, decided to go into exile. He didn't, like, stick around on Coruscant. He went to Dagobah. Yeah. So I'm just saying, it'd be weird if his wife died on that planet during Kylo Ren's attack, and then he carried her body all the way there. I mean, never mind. It it doesn't matter that much. Well, maybe it's just a a pretty setting for her to die. That's true. Her final resting place. But the thing is about you know Luke's like you know Luke actually having a wife is Jedi's aren't supposed to have that kind of relationship. Well, like, the thing is, love. is when when he w- became a Jedi, the, all of those Jedi rules he, nobody told him about them. There was a whole new Jedi know. order that he created off camera. Obi Wan would be like, "Yeah, you can't, you can't have any children, or or love someone." Yeah, and he's like, "What? Can't do that. That's nasty." <laughs> Okay, guys, don't well, do I mean, nasty. they can they can do that. They just can't have attachments. That's that's the whole thing. Is that is attachments like dis- detract from their their I don't know whatever their their mission. Like they can still have they can still do stuff with species. I don't know what species. What? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yes. Like they're not they're not supposed to be completely celibate. Like there's no rule against celibate. For celibacy, there's a there's just rules against attachment, uh, personal attachments. Mm-hmm. And uh, we apologize if you guys hear any music. Um, Kirill's upstairs uh, neighbors aren't quiet people. They're so assholes. There you go. Nice. <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay. So, um, any more? What do you think, Kirill? Who do you think Ray's? Uh, father is oh i definitely think it's luke oh 
Oh, it's totally Yoda, guys. <laughs> that would be crazy. That would be weird. Shot out of the dark. No one saw it. <laughs> no, it's Chewbacca and Leia's child. Oh, man. Oh, God. Oh. <laughs> I mean, Chewbacca and Yoda, you know they had a little side thing going <laughs> in the third episode. Yeah, yeah. dude. Oh uh, well, okay, but I mean, Chewbacca already had a family. If you've seen the Chewbacca special, I mean, mean the, the holiday Christmas. special, <laughs> the Christmas special, not the Chewbacca special. <laughs> that was really gross. I saw clips from that. Yeah, disgusting. Oh, uh, Jefferson Jefferson Starship was there. Um, what was that? Who? Uh, what big song was theirs? I can't remember. Um, uh, crap. It doesn't matter. No, it doesn't. Uh, yes, it does. All right. So there's uh, there's one more thing I want to talk about. Talking about Star Wars. Uh, this week there was a uh, like text based adventure game online where you take the role as George Lucas, and the whole point of this game is trying to create star wars like the idea of it Mm. so you're in 1975 and you're like the whole premise was like you're sitting in your room like you're sitting in the living room as george lucas in 1975 what and you want to try and create the next big thing like the next big movie so and you're also out of milk like what's Uh. now what do you do and it's like (laughs) a bunch of different weird things it's like watch um, I can't remember his name. Some Japanese director's film, or go get milk, or create the Death Star, like the idea for the concept of the Death Star, and a couple other things, different weird things like that. And so I I played through some of it, and like I chose the one where it's like go get some milk, and so then you end up like on your way to get the milk, you hit a um you hit a co- you hit a dog. And when Whoa, you hit spoilers, <laughs> oh my right. goodness, there's a bunch of different options. But and then so he's like, huh, hitting that dog makes me think I should have a character in this new movie I have called Chewbacca, which is a Wookiee, which is a giant, hairy, like mass of person. <laughs> so, like, <laughs> and then so, like, a bunch of other things ensue, and then, like, the outcome of it is like. You've created an all Chewbacca slash Wookiee version of Star Wars <laughs> from going to get milk. Or there's another one where it's like you go see Tiger Woods being born. Oh. Because Tiger Woods was what? born on December 30th, 1975. Why would you go so, watch him be born? So like, <laughs> That's weird. So like, what the, so, <laughs> so, Why would you watch the greatest golfer be born? So, He's a god. Well, no, that's the thing. So like, you're running to the hospital. And the nurse says, hey, what are you doing? And he's like, I'm George Lucas, the creator of Star Wars. And she's like, I'm here to see. And he's like, I'm here to see Tiger Woods being born. And she's like, really? Well, right this way. And then you just like, uh, run uh, <laughs> to Tiger, like the room where Tiger Woods is being born. And then Tiger Woods' dad is just like, oh, you're George Lucas, aren't you? We're so happy you're here to see like Tiger oh, being fuck? born. Go say, go whisper something in like a positive thing in my wife's ear while she's in labor, and it was kind of weird. But like, so there's different options for that, obviously. So I was just like, I chose the one that was just like, I'm George Lucas. I'm trying to create Star Wars right now, and then like Tiger Woods is born, and then you just go back to his house and start. You're still out of milk. The whole other loop. What? <laughs> and you're still out of milk. Yep. And, um, yeah. Exactly. So there's a bunch of. Is there a- what? Is there a path where you actually go and get milk? Yeah, yeah, no, that's the one where you get hit by you hit a dog. I know, but you actually like go to the store. Yeah, you go to the store. And you I, pick I didn't, up a glass of milk. Yeah, no, I didn't want to. I didn't want to say that because of spoilers or anything, like because you made a big deal out of it, you jerk. <laughs> I was joking. <laughs> so, it was a funny. Yeah, no. So you get to the grocery store, and you see this woman there, and um she like you bump into her and then she's like oh you're george lucas and he's she's like he's like yeah you're right who are you and she's like well my i'm leia and (laughs) but some people call me princess because i like to have sex with princes uh, (laughs) what and then there's this weird like thing where he's like like george thinks in his mind wow I should have another Wookiee character named Princess Leia in my Chewbacca Star Wars movie. And a bunch of, you know, so that's basically what happens at the grocery store. 
And then there was another one with a Japanese director where you watch one of his movies and then you watch the third movies, which is like watching George make Star Wars in 1975. And it's just a live stream of George Lucas sitting there watching all the Japanese like director movies. And so we like, look, and then he looks like George Lucas actually like looks out his window and sees the guy, the director with the camera and the director like sees him runs, jumps up onto George Lucas's roof and stays up there. And then they end up becoming friends and make a Star Wars movie, which is a, a roller coaster movie in space. Well, I and so, I think I know what wins Game of the Year. <laughs> I mean, there's nothing like... I mean, it's just like it's an in-browser game. Like, it's nothing crazy. But just some, like you guys can go through it if you want to. There's a lot of other things we didn't cover. It's just hilarious, and you guys should try it out and see. Like, it's just really funny. So, yeah, uh, any other stuff you guys want to talk about or other Star Wars-related things? No. I think nope. I'm good. Star Wars is stupid. <laughs> okay, well... And then GameBlock got kicked off the internet <laughs> And hated. Actually, anything that's on the internet is hated. It's true. Um, all right, well, I guess that wraps it up for this episode. Thank you guys for listening. Uh, if, you wanna go- if you guys want to see us on social media, we're on Facebook and Twitter, at GameBlock. You know, very simple... Uh, we also have our blog, which we'll have a link to in our description, where Kirill updates pretty regularly, and hopefully we'll put some stuff up in there too. And you guys can also find us on YouTube. Uh, that's where we also have podcasts. Well, we put the podcast if you're not using SoundCloud or a podcast app. And that's it. Thanks, guys, for listening. I'm Richie. I'm Kirill. I'm Jonathan. <laughs> and thanks, guys. Bye. Get in a comfortable position that the I can sit in zone. for 45 more minutes. Get All right. In the zone. The auto zone. Or the P-Zone, which was the Pizza Hut Calzone. I know. In the I, early remember, 2000s. I, remember, I remember watching a review for that. <laughs> you watch reviews for pizza? <laughs> no, I just was like... <laughs> I was really... Conf- someone said the word P-Zone, and I was really confused, so... Like Google searched Pizone and there was like a, this like total stoner just reviewing the Pizone and he just took a bite and he was like, "Oh yeah, that's good." <laughs> <laughs>